Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. Have you heard about the 38% rule? This is something that pops up a lot when you're researching kind of speaker positioning, listening positioning, setting up a new room. But I always thought this was really confusing. When I first stumbled across this, what 38% are we talking about here? Is this talking about actually placing the speakers at 38% of the room? Is it talking about the listening position? When you dive into this, you suddenly come across images like this or like this, and things start becoming really confusing. So I want to clear that up in this video. I want to explain to you what the 38% rule actually means, where it came from, what it's supposed to tell you and give you, and then show you what the limitations are and why there's actually a better way to do this. So let's dive in. So the 38% rule, in a nutshell, is a way to place your listening position in your room. Now, this was first created or stipulated by an acoustician called Wes Le Show, and he very clearly also said that this is not a rule. This is a starting point to place your listening position and to then work off of to actually find where you should place your listening position ideally. Here's a post I found on the ProSound web forum from 2007, where Wes Le Show says the following. Hey guys, yeah, I think it was I who started the whole 38% thing as a starting point for the listener position, but I never called it a rule. That just sort of happened as it spread around the internet. The main point is to get safely outside of the midpoint, 50% of the room, and 38% often works out to be about right, particularly when using wall-mounted speakers in a typical mid-sized 20-foot deep control room. For a mastering room, approximately 38% from the back wall might actually be better. If the room is deep enough, that 38% is 10 feet or so. And he goes on about some other stuff, but that's kind of the important thing that I wanted to show you here. Yeah, so Wes confirms himself that this is just a starting point, and the idea is to get out of the midpoint, the middle of the room, okay? So this is all about standing waves. The idea behind the 38% rule is to place your listening position in a spot in your room where all the room modes balance out against each other. So here's the idea behind it. And what I want to show you, uh, what I want to explain to you first is basically just the image here on the left. This is from a room mode calculator that you can download, I believe, off of the Harman website. By the way, if uh, if, if I can still find the link to this particular calculator, I'll put it down below. And what we're going to look at here is just the top diagram here, okay? And what I want need you to understand is that this shows us the room modes, the basic fundamental room mode, and its upper harmonics along the length of the room, okay? So we've got the front of the room here, we've got the back of the room here, and then these lines show us the pressure change with each of these room modes, which is reach with each of these standing waves. So we've got half a cycle, half a wavelength with the blue line, right? So we've got maximum pressure at the wall, then it, we get a cancellation in the middle of the room. That's why Wes said he wants us to get out of the, the middle of the room. And then uh, it, it increases back up to full pressure. Then we've got the black line, which is one cycle of this particular frequency fitting between the front and back wall. And then we've got the red line and then the yellow line. These are all, again, harmonics of the same standing wave fit that fit between the front and the back of the room. And the idea behind the 38% rule is to simply find a spot along the length of the room where all the energy in between, between these standing waves roughly evens out. And if you look at this, it's going to be somewhere around here. Right? We're not in a full cancellation, like in the middle of the room or here or here, and where we don't get maximum pressure, maximum summation uh, from, from all of them either. Right? I mean, you can't, it's not perfect. None of this is absolutely perfect, but it's, it's going to be somewhere around here where you get roughly the same amount of energy from all of these standing waves. And that ends up being at around 38% of the length of the room. Yeah, that's why Wes also said there's one at the back because it's exactly the same thing happening at the back. Uh, it's actually going to be here. Yeah, so that's why he said in that quote uh, that for mastering rooms, he prefers that if there's space. 
Yeah? But that's basically the idea. Here's another way to look at it. So this is from the Master Handbook of Acoustics uh, by uh, Everest and Pullman. Uh, by the way, if you're getting into acoustics, you want to read up some basic knowledge. It's a great book to get started with. And so this is one of the images I took from that book. And it basically shows us the same thing. Yeah? So let's look at this top image, even though it shows us elevation. Yeah? But along the length of the room, we've got half a cycle. We've got, I guess, this dashed line. The big dashes is one cycle. And then the next harmonic up is, uh, is this two cycles? potentially, I believe, yeah? So again, we basically want to position ourselves at roughly 38% of the length of the room in order to get a, a mix between all the energies in these standing waves where there, none of them are in full cancellation and hopefully none of them are in m maximum summation either, yeah? But so that's the idea behind the 38% rule. It's pretty simple. But there's a big problem with this. First of all, this only works in perfectly rectangular rooms. It only works if the walls, if the surfaces of this room are actually basically fully reflective so that you actually get this standing wave pattern. Because what might happen is that your room isn't a perfect rectangle. Yeah, maybe you have some splayed walls, some angles in there. Maybe it's like L-shaped if it's a basement or something. Maybe you've got a slanted ceiling. And that all that means is that the these room modes might be affected. Of course, also we only we we also have room modes along not just the length of the room in terms of axial modes, but also in terms of left to right, top and bottom, yeah, floor to ceiling, and then we've got our um, tangential modes and our oblique modes as well. None of them carry as much energy as these axial modes, but they still play into the bigger picture of this, of this balance that you're getting between all the standing waves. And even if your room is at least visually a rectangle, you might have a solid front wall, let's say made from brick, and then a dry, a dry wall back wall. Yeah, and in that case, what happens is something that we can see here. So this is an image I took from. Uh, sound reproduction, loudspeakers in rooms uh, by Floyd Tool. Yeah, so the same person or the same co company that uh, gave us the room mode calculator that I showed you at the beginning. And here's an example of what happens when the back wall isn't actually fully reflective. What happens, you can see here, it says it's marked physical wall, but then we get the acoustical wall further out from that. And that means that this lower uh, frequency room mode with the longer wavelength, its node isn't actually in the middle of the room anymore and doesn't reach maximum pressure at the physical wall either. And that means that this 38% spot is shifted because the same spot that would give us the same balance has now shifted in its location because the physical wall or the acoustical wall isn't where we think it is. And this might again happen because of construction. Drywall is, is a, a prime example for that because it lets low frequencies pass through to some extent. Yeah, But also just asymmetries in the room might have a, a, an effect like that. There are pot many potential causes for why you don't get that ideal pattern of standing waves in your room. But so that's why I came up with the base hunter technique, right? So you still want to identify that spot in your room. I call it the low end sweet spot where your standing waves balance out, but you can't rely on rules of thumb or on, on just the geometry of the room anymore. This is something you have to find out in practice. You have to test the room to figure out where that spot is. And obviously you can do this with measurements and stuff, trial and error, but there's an easier way. And that is to just create the kind of worst case scenario in terms of standing waves. You agitate, you put energy into all the standing waves that you can potentially create in your room. And then you just use your ear to find where that spot actually is. Yeah, If you create the worst case scenario where you really get massive 
summations and cancellations because of these standing waves, it's very possible to hear what is going on and then just by systematic testing figure out where that low end sweet spot actually is just by using years. And so again, that's why I created the base hunter technique and I created a step-by-step -step guide that you can download for free at the link in the description to follow this process. It's basically very simple. You put a speaker, one single speaker, in the corner of the room, yeah, ideally around where you would like to place your listening position, your speakers, your whole setup, your mixing setup. And then you just find an axis along the length of the room, starting from where you want to ideally place your listening position. You basically split the room in half so that you end up having left and right symmetry once you're done with this process. But so you split the room in half, left to right, find the length, a length axis, and then sitting in your chair, you start at the very front of the room and you roll back listening to music that you know very well with a dynamic low end and just get an impression of how the bass, how the low end changes as you move from the very front of the room to the very back of the room. And if you do this a couple of times with a few different songs that you know very well, you will get a very good impression where the low end actually sounds balanced. I tend to distinguish between kind of chest, which is kind of upper bass punch, and stomach, which is kind of lower bass sub, right? And you want these two to roughly be balanced against each other. You want to feel both, yeah? But you got to do this with music that you know very well, otherwise it can get confusing. And obviously in rooms that are extremely reverberant, this can also be a bit tricky because you really want to focus only on the low end and not get distracted by everything else happening on top, yeah? So in that case, it can be uh, beneficial to also put up a bit of absorption in the room, maybe put up some blankets, some mattresses, just to tame the overall reverb in the upper parts of the spectrum a bit. And that can make the process a lot easier. And then you simply test all the length of the room. You find the spots where it roughly sounds balanced, and then you fine tune. You play through the, this, this process again, you iterate, you listen to the first song again, you find where exactly it sounds the most balanced, and then you mark that position on the floor. And that is now your listening position. This is the low end sweet spot. That's the spot where your head needs to end up once you've put up your speakers. Yeah, so it's a simple process. Again, if you want to follow this on paper, I've got a PDF for you to download a guide, a step-by-step -step guide, my guide to the Bass Hunter technique that you can download for free at the link in the description. All right, so I hope the next time you're setting up a new room and you're thinking about this whole 38% rule, you know what it's actually about, you know what the limitations are, you have a way to do it better, and especially if you are in a room that isn't a perfect rectangle, that isn't perfectly symmetrical, you now have a method where you can still find that same spot, you can still follow the science, but using your ears, go about the smart way of finding your listening position and actually setting yourself up for a proper balanced low end. But with that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.